Since AMD's FSR technology just launched, I thought I'd give it a quick try on some of the GPUs that none of the reviewers have tried yet, specifically Intel integrated GPUs. And in this case, I have this HP Spectre X360 from like 2016 with a Core i7-6500U and an Intel HD Graphics 520, which is a really horrible GPU and CPU combination if you're trying to do any kind of gaming. But I thought I'll give it a shot in Rift Breakers with the new FSR update and see how it goes, because I think this is the most interesting or at least one of the most interesting aspects of FSR in that you can use it on basically any GPU. And that means that the owners of integrated GPUs or really low-end and old GPUs might have a really substantial FPS increase and give new life to their old GPUs and slow GPUs to make them actually playable in some of the newer titles. So I thought this would be a really interesting test. So let's just take a look at the benchmark section of this game straight away. Now considering the power of this GPU, or the lack thereof, I'll obviously be using the lowest settings for every single settings in the menu, and I'll be using no FSR for the first test. And yeah, here you can see the result, it's only 12.25 FPS on average, which is utterly unplayable, especially when it dips to 10 FPS, so yeah, this is not a recommended way to play this game at all. Now turning on FSR to the ultra quality preset, which is just a slight reduction in the resolution, you're already getting about 18 FPS which is quite a huge increase. It's actually a 45% increase compared to no FSR applied. And that's actually really impressive because, well, the FPS is still really low and quite unplayable, but that is a 45% FPS increase for almost loss, no loss in visual quality, at least especially if you're using it in a really small screen on a laptop like this one. So let's turn it up even more to the quality preset and see how it does. Now on the quality preset, we can see yet another small gain in FPS. Now it's about just over 20 FPS, which is actually already close to double the FPS without FSR enabled. And that's really impressive to me because at this setting, even though yes, it's a bit blurrier, but when you're playing on an integrated GPU on a small laptop screen, you probably don't really care about the graphics quality as long as it's somewhat playable. And we're really fast approaching the playable 30 FPS mark in here, so let's turn it up even more and see what it does on the balance profile. Now here on the balance profile, you can see the FPS increase even more at just under 24 FPS. So this is where it's actually cinematic, as they say, you know? It's about 24 FPS, which is the same as what movies play at, so... Well, it's still pretty horrible, but it's way more playable than something like 12 FPS without FSR enabled. This is literally double the FPS of FSR disabled, so... Let's see if the performance preset can actually push this even further and get us closer to the 30 FPS mark on a really low-end GPU like this one. Okay, well, maybe striving for 30 FPS is still way too high for an integrated Intel GPU, but at least we're getting 27 FPS, which is pretty darn close. And even though the lows are pretty crappy, it's mostly when there's lots of effects, and this really makes the game much more playable. New PC gamers that are using high-end gaming PCs might scoff at this, but this is a huge game changer, because this means that AAA games could be better optimized to play on low-end GPUs with the FSR technology that AMD has implemented here. It's a lot better experience than playing at 12 FPS, even though the graphics quality does suffer a lot, and you might have seen that it's a lot more blurry at the performance preset, and that's because it's only rendering at 540p. But nevertheless, this is a real performance gain that's actually substantial. I mean, going from 12 to 27 FPS is over double the FPS, and that's a really, really big increase, especially on integrated graphics that you can't overclock or upgrade on this kind of laptop. And just to clarify, this is all on the Intel HD Graphics 520 on my i7-6500U HP Spectre laptop. And this has been optimized so that it doesn't thermal throttle, I've undervolted it and applied more thermal pads as well as thermal paste on this laptop, so it runs at a constant 1GHz, but yeah, this is quite an impressive result on what FSR can do on low-end GPUs. And here's what it does to actual gameplay. When playing at just about 12 FPS without FSR enabled, you can see the input lag is absolutely horrendous and this game is basically unplayable. It's literally a slideshow. You press a button and it takes a second or two to actually register in your screen. 
and the game actually slows down as well and it's everything just turns to slow-mo and it's a mess. But when you enable FSR, in this case I turned it to the balance mode for the highest FPS possible, it's actually somewhat playable. Sure, it's a bit laggy and it's not exactly the smoothest experience, but it's actually playable if you can bear with the choppiness. You can actually go through and play this game. I mean, I know console players also just play games at 30 FPS and this is just about 30 FPS as well, so it's not that big of a difference. And you can do this on a really crappy Intel HD graphics GPU. And to give you a perspective, this GPU only has 24 EUs, which equals just about 192 shader cores, which means that it only uses 7 to 8 watts, which is basically the amount of power an RTX 3090 fluctuates in a millisecond. So to be able to run this game on this really low-end hardware, it's actually really impressive because like I said, this game is not exactly the lightest game to run. And yeah, that's pretty much my conclusion, is that FSR is really impressive, and especially so on low-end APUs and iGPUs, because that means that it can increase the performance quite a lot. And while technically you could get even more performance by just lowering the resolution scaling, just like the traditional way, without FSR, the game looks really bad at the lower resolutions. And here, as you can see in these examples, on all the FSR settings compared to just native resolution scaling at 50%, which is the same resolution as FSR on performance mode, you can see that FSR is just way better than just using normal scaling. So with FSR, you're getting FPS improvements while keeping the game not looking too crappy. So I would say this is a huge success for AMD's FSR technology because, well, if people start to hear about FSR being an AMD thing, they might think to buy AMD GPUs instead of something like Nvidia GPUs when upgrading from their really low-end PCs. But yeah, that's it for this video, I hope you do find this interesting, and if you do, maybe leave a like and maybe click subscribe to see more videos like this one, or actually even more interesting deep dive videos as well. Thanks for watching.